And with that, we are so pleased to be joined on the phone by the head coach of your <laughs> Seagraves Eagles. It's Steve Hereford. Coach, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Doing just fine, Coach. We really appreciate you hopping on with us on your mm-hmm. bye week. Uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, you go from San Angelo Central, you know, a 6A team, down to Seagraves, which is 2A Division Two. What has that transition from big school back down to small school? I know you've got some experience down there, but what was that transition like for you? Well, it wasn't a direct transition. Uh, Central was 5A when I was there, mm-hmm. uh, and – I played at uh, I played at Midland Greenwood in high school, and we were about the size that Seagraves is now. But but from San Angelo Central, I went to Refugio, uh for from 2009 through 2013, and so there was four years in Refugio as uh, the defense coordinator. And then I'm from West Texas. My wife's from West Texas, so uh, we're looking for an opportunity to get back out here. And Seagraves provided one, and uh, Refugio was great experience for the you know the what we're doing right now in, in Seagraves. So you went from the coastal bend back up to West Texas. That's tr- that's quite a quite a change of scenery, I imagine. But I imagine y- your family is is pretty pleased with the move back to West Texas. Right, and my wife was too. A lot of people, you know, a lot of ladies, coaches try to bring Metroplex wives out to West Texas, and they they say leave the car running. But uh, <laughs> in, in our case, uh, my wife's from Sweetwater. I'm from Midland, and so this is. Big sky country out here. We think it's beautiful. We love it. Love the people. Love the love the scenery or lack of scenery. Some people would say, but uh, but yeah, we feel we're at home. It's it's beautiful out there. I don't I don't know why people <laughs> feel not. It's beautiful. But let's talk about your squad. You guys have a, a heck of a team this year. We knew that you guys would be good. Maybe not this good. You guys have been excellent. And it all starts. Everybody looks at big number forty four, Corey Kyle. Uh, just from your experience, how special of a player is Corey Kyle? Corey's very special. I've coached, like you said, I've, uh, my first head coaching job was in Del Rio and I coached at, uh, uh, Magnolia, San Angelo Central. So I've been around big schools. Uh, Corey would start anywhere I've ever been. And is, I would say in all the backs, this is my 26 year coaching. Corey's for sure top three. And so, you know, you don't, you don't get to coach young men like, uh, Corey with his talent and his ability, uh, very often. And especially at the, at the two, a level we're joined by Steve Hereford the head coach at Seagraves here on DCTF Live. Get involved with the conversation. Hashtag DCTF Live. Coach, one of the things that I've I've always marveled at is his workload. You know, in his career, he's got he came into the year with 652 carries. Now, I know he's been a little bit banged up this year, but uh, for Corey, how important is it for you to, to manage his workload for what you hope to be a very long playoff run? Well, it's it's important, and we're more able to do that this year. We uh, over time we've become a more complete football team. Corey's first year, um, or my first year, Corey's sophomore year, he rushed for 700 as a freshman before I got here. But that year, our quarterback had an injury uh, early, and Corey just—I mean, <laughs> I hate to say carried because it is a team game, an 11-man game. Yeah, he 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 really is. He's something special. Uh, now uh, he kept us competitive until we became. Uh, it took us about oh, about eight games to become a good football team our first season, and then we uh, we went and uh, won our region and lost to Wellington. And then last year uh, we were a little more complete team, but Corey still had an incredible workload. This year we've we've spread it around a little more. Absolutely, and and this is a a squad that I think it, we would be remiss if we just said, oh, it's the Corey Kyle show because. You have a number of other really impressive offensive weapons. Tell tell the folks around the state about the other guys we need to know offensively besides big number 44. Well, every, like you said earlier, everyone wants to talk about that bell cow running back, and then everyone wants to talk about the skill guys. The Probably the biggest strength of our team is our, our offensive line. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's four of those guys who are seniors have been, and all of them for multiple years. So, I mean, it starts up front. And that's one reason why uh, the, the skill guys, Kyle, uh, our quarterback, Joseph Guerrero, uh, another running back who was a tight end for us last year, Robbie Pinon. He, he's the only back to rush for over 200 yards for us this year. And then Richard Longoria has started since he was a freshman, and he's a, he's a junior now as well. So we have we have a lot of different ways, a lot of speed on the field. Um, Richard's more a speed guy. Corey, Robbie, uh, and even the quarterback can all run with power and speed. So uh, – 
Yeah, we're blessed with, especially for a small school, we're blessed with some talent. We would also be remiss if we didn't mention that your defense is crushing people right now. I mean, the defense has played outrageously well against some against some tough opponents as well. Uh, you know, how impressive how impressed have you been by your defense's performances? You know, we've we've played great. It's kind of a, a challenge. You know, you you'd like to shut people out, uh, but what what happens? Our offense, the games go like this. I think our last game, our offense had twenty four plays. <laughs> And, and uh, Corey gets for 172. What happens is they kick off, we score, and then we play defense for three or four plays, and then we get the ball back and we score. I mean, we we score so quickly that our defense is always out there. But the biggest problem with uh, our defense statistics is one points, uh, and I've been on the other end of those. But once you're up, you you need to sub and get younger kids in and get those starters off, and then. Then you, uh, you know, our our stats don't necessarily reflect how good we are defensively because our starters only played half a game the other day, and then you know we're letting young kids and we pulled our JV up so they could play some of that time, and uh, you know those kids are getting in there, and then you know the stats look a little different when when you're going deep into your. So you could make an argument, Coach Hereford, that the biggest problem facing your team is that your offense is too good. Well, I'm never going to do that. I, I'm never. I'm. 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 A, I've been a DC more than I've been anything. I've never complained that our offense scored too fast. Yeah. Because yeah. I've been on plenty of teams that couldn't score at all. So. <laughs> yeah, it's way. Uh, it's way better than the alternative. Yeah. It's, it, hey, score all you want, and we'll 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 play defense. We just our defensive kids are getting a lot more playing time than our offensive kids right now. But you know that won't always be the case. It's a unique deal in uh, 2A Division Two when you have a really talented deep group because. A lot of schools don't, you know. It they tend to cycle. After this year, we'll probably cycle down, and our we'll look like a two A Division two school again. But but right now, we just are really blessed with talent and depth, and uh, so there's some some mismatches, and that's why we've gone ahead and pulled our JV up so that we can, you know, we want to be play great and be really physical, but we also want to be first class uh, in everything we do. We're talking to Seagraves head coach Steve Hereford here. On DCTF Live, Coach, you're on your bye week night right now. You've got two more games uh, on the road at Smyer uh, and then against Plains. And for those who don't know, maybe who only pay attention to 6A and 5A, there is a bye week on the line. Uh, winning your district title gets you a bye week in the first round. How huge would that be for your team to get a week off right before the playoffs start? Well, I, I don't like the bye week. And uh, this year, I guess this is breaking news, but the, the UIL – decided to take four teams to the playoffs so that we don't That's have right. a bye week. You know what? I knew that. Oh, geez. <laughs> That's a, that I figured right. you did, but but I like right. not having a bye week. I, I like having a bye week right now so we can get <laughs> healthy and, and get get some you know, classroom, make sure we're good on our grades. But then going into the playoffs, I don't like that bye week. Yeah. Uh, last year, we had a bye, but we didn't play till Saturday. Uh, and we watched Oof. as four of the top ten teams in our division – got upset under four i know three of them were undefeated mm -hmm. uh and i just think that's a trap game when you especially when you're nine and one or ten and oh and your kids think you're great and then mm -hmm. and you take that week off and it takes you about half a game to get to playing good football again so i'm glad this year that we're gonna hit the ground running in the playoffs man i knew that i knew that i'm mad i'm gonna be mad at myself <laughs> all day for messing that up so uh, uh this year and i mean we haven't actually done it yet so it's <laughs> yeah give me one year give me one year I, it took me a year to get used to class 6a so you yeah, gotta there you go me, yeah gotta yeah. give me uh so uh, we'll ask you we'll ask you one last question before before you if you head out uh this is a, a squad that looks poised for a playoff run and you've been on some teams uh you know at refurio and even at san angelo central uh, where you've made playoff runs before uh, what is the difference between a good team that thrives in the playoffs and a good team that maybe stumbles in the playoffs? Oh, that is a good question. That's why I mean, they I, pay me the big bucks, coach. That's exactly right. Uh, <laughs> you know, you. I told my kids all last year, we lost to Albany in a tough game in the, in the semifinals. But I told them after that week one game where four of the top ten lost that it, it doesn't matter. Open play every week or seasons that are in. I had to be hungry, hot, healthy. There's three H's. Uh, you know, you got to have all those, but uh, but you you got to play great every week, or you're done, no matter who you're playing.
Yeah, you're exactly right. He is Coach Steve Hereford, the head coach of the Seagraves Eagles, enjoying his bye week. Coach, thanks for joining us, and with any luck, we'll see you in Houston. That'd be great. Thank you. <laughs> thanks a lot, Coach.